Hi guys, I'm Gio, and this story today is called Regret. Life couldn't be any sweeter. Basketball season had ended on a high note. We didn't make any of the Sweet 16 games, but our average was good. I was captain of the basketball team, and I was dating the head cheerleader. On paper, that sounded like a dream. My GPA was a 3.9, which is pretty good considering I'd graduate this year in pre-law, and it kept my dad off my back. I'm following in dad's footsteps. He's a liar. Physically, I'm in the best shape I've ever been. Financially, I'm better than stable. Life should have been good. It should have been incredible. Everybody thought I had everything to live for, but I didn't. I felt empty. I'm Oliver Landau, and I have to rethink my life. I'm dissatisfied with my girlfriend, Patricia. The longer we are together, the more incompatible we become. The fights happen daily until she gets her way. Every job I've applied for has said, nice resume, but we're not hiring. What do I do when I graduate? A law degree is expensive, and though my dad and stepmom promise to pay half, I still have to come up with the other half and pay rent and car payments. It's looking like electricity might be optional. I used to see my biological mom on the occasional weekend, until she moved in with a guy. One night, after she had drunk a couple too many, she admitted that she never wanted kids. I had been an accident. My life is so busy and weird. Oh crap, I forgot to do laundry. When will I have time for it? Basketball season was over. So was my time of being a star, which gave me plenty of time to focus on my grades. Back in September, the academic counselors reviewed my class load. I'm in pre-law and have been accepted into the graduate law program next year. The counselors discovered I was missing a basic elective, Economics 101, and I can't graduate until I take it. That's the class I'm in now. There is a cute guy in the class I think I know. It might not be him. I hope it's not him. But how many people have scars on their left cheek? I had to look in my old middle school yearbook to find his name. And there it was. Gregory Williams. I ruined his life. Me and my friends were in 8th grade. Gregory was in 7th. The new geeky kid came to school a couple weeks late with a bandage covering the left side of his face. Why couldn't I have been nicer? Instead, I saw an easy, pathetic target. One time, he had the bandage off and was gingerly applying some kind of cream to the scar. A long, thin, dark line that looked kind of like a sideways letter for starting just short of his mouth. He'd been attacked by some kind of animal. There was a look about his eyes, like he was always scared. He didn't talk about what happened. He didn't talk much at all. He avoided people. Me and my friends didn't avoid him. We called him every name we could think of. And worse, we made Gregory's life hell, to the point that we were called into the vice principal's office twice given detention, threatened with a district safe schools hearing if we continued acting like we did. And then it didn't matter anymore. Gregory transferred schools. Then we found another person to bully, and I forgot the kid with the scarred face. I was a serious jerk back then. Mom had left a year or more before, and Dad was seeing someone. My family had fallen apart. I couldn't cope. I became mean and angry, and I took it out on everybody. That phase lasted for three years. I had a coach in high school sit me down, vice principal with him, and one of the counselors, and dad. He'd been remarried for a couple of years. Coach stayed very calm and told me how the brick hit the cookies. Oliver, you're nothing more than a spoiled punk. If any of the pros acted like you, 
The coaches, the scouts, and the fans wouldn't want anything to do with them. It doesn't matter how good you are. No college will take you. This is your only warning. Either change your attitude now, or I will kick your rude, angry, entitled butt off my team. Basketball was my life, so I changed me. It took time, but I cleaned up my act. I became a new person, and everything was fine. Until this class. Until I saw the man I had tormented years ago, sitting three rows behind me. Gregory had grown up. He wasn't a kid anymore, but one very handsome man. Until he turned a little, and the scars on his left cheek became visible. He must have had plastic surgery since I'd last seen him, because his scars were not as noticeable unless he didn't shave. Then they stood out. Gregory still kept to himself, avoiding the other people in the class. If he spoke to anybody, he turned his head a little so the scars were slightly hidden. He wore his brown hair long, letting it drape over the left side of his face. As if that wasn't enough, he wore a dark gray hoodie with the hood pulled up. Was his soul scarred as well? Blame that on me. If I had been a friend back then, maybe Gregory wouldn't have transferred. Maybe he wouldn't be so afraid around people. Was that my fault? I think so. We bumped into each other, once, as we were leaving economics. Hi, you're Gregory, right? I asked, hoping his answer would be no. Gregory Williams, but I don't know your name, he said. His head lowered, and his eyes only glanced at mine. Once. Oliver Landau, I said. There was no flash of recognition. Gregory didn't remember me. Aren't you on the basketball team, he said. Captain, maybe I'll see you at one of the games, I said. I'd like that, he said, flashing a shy smile. As he walked away, I remembered him as the terrified kid with a huge bandage on his face. Gregory had turned into a shy man who avoided people. Was it too late to apologize? I hope not. If we ever talked again, I would. Basketball season had ended, and it was time to pull my grades back together. The teachers were understanding and extended their deadlines so I could catch up. My only problem was this gigantic paper in economics. The class didn't have a final exam. The teacher based everything on class attendance, weekly tests, and a huge final paper. Wednesday, after the season ended, I sat in the cafeteria reading the economic text when a quiet, trembling voice said, Hi, would you like some coffee? A small coffee appeared in front of me. I looked up from my book. Oh my God, it was him, Gregory Williams. My legs started shaking, and I felt ill. I needed to apologize right now. He wore a blue and purple tie-dyed shirt, a large dark gray hoodie with the hood up, and a two-inch rainbow crystal hung from a silver chain around his neck. His clothes were wrinkled, and he hadn't shaved. The odd scars on his cheek were thin white lines. His scars had healed over, and somehow the plastic surgeons had smoothed them down made them less noticeable. Gregory's left hand reached up and covered the scars, then held the crystal. He avoided eye contact, but gave me a hesitating smile. What do I say to him? It's been years, and now he's here? He wanted to talk to me? My stomach watered up like an old paper towel, and I took a slow breath to calm down. I'd love some coffee. Hi yourself, I said, trying to be as warm and friendly as I could. Somehow, I had to apologize. Did Gregory know who I was? Had he figured it out? He could scream and yell at me as much as he wanted. Hit me, kick me, swear at me, whatever. I deserved it for what I put him through. We have a class together, economics. I'm Gregory, a major psych. I mean, a psych major, he said, attempting a smile. Gregory still didn't remember me. He turned into a beautiful man, but the scars made him timid and people shy. Blame me for that one. I'll keep the conversation going as I work up the courage. I know you. 
You're the guy that sits a couple of rows behind us. That's me. What did you think about the final paper our professor assigned? Gregory said in his soft, quiet voice. I've tried hard not to think about the paper. I've been so busy with basketball I haven't done a thing, I said. Gregory, his smile small and hesitating, fiddled with the rainbow crystal around his neck. Was he gay? Something inside me said yes. Maybe we could work on it. I mean the paper, together, and we could meet at the library sometime and, um, work on it, he asked. Was he hitting on me too? Did he recognize me subconsciously and seek me out without knowing why? Before we go any further, I have to tell him who I am and apologize. Gregory, I'd... Oliver, there you are. I've been sending you text after text and you haven't answered your phone. Patricia, my current girlfriend, yelled. She set a gigantic cappuccino in front of me. Three of my friends from the basketball team were with her. Not now, I wanted to shout. Why did my friends have to show up at this moment? I was about to apologize. All Patricia wanted to talk about was her dress for the celebration, and the guys would want to talk about the teams and their rankings. What happened to you? Patricia sneered at Gregory. I almost yelled at her for being rude. Gregory's hand flew to his face and covered the scars. Dog bite. I was embarrassed for him. Why was I still dating Patricia? Gregory fled a moment later. Patricia, would you knock it off? That was important, I said. It was only class stuff. The celebration is the social event of the year, and since we're seniors, it's the last celebration we'll be attending, she said, pulling out a lipstick and touching up her lips. Excuse me for disagreeing. I need to go find Gregory, I said, gathering my stuff. What about your coffee? I bought it especially for you, Patricia said. Give it to the guys, I said, and tried to follow Gregory. He wasn't in the building, or outside the building. Where was he? The rest of the day and into the night, all I thought about was Gregory and how I had treated him back in middle school. We were both kids then, and I was having a hard time with my parents' divorce. So Gregory would understand, right? Then why was he the shyest guy I had ever met? Why was he always afraid? Why did I feel like I had to apologize? Why couldn't I get rid of the constant guilt? The next day at class, I met Patricia and the guys by the door. It gave me a chance to see the usual seat Gregory sat in. It was empty. Though we stayed by the door and chatted for a few minutes, Gregory didn't show. When we entered, Patricia was talking about how one of the other cheerleaders had a dress for the celebration just like hers. So what? I said. So what? It's intolerable. That's such a guy thing to say. None of you care how you look. So what if somebody else has the same tie or the same shoes or the same suit? I bet your little friend from yesterday would understand, she said. Why is that? I said. You are so dense. Oliver, did you see how he looked at you? Gregory is obviously gay, and if I hadn't been there, he would have put the moves on you. You're welcome for me saving your masculinity, Patricia said. I already knew he was gay, I said. I don't like him, so stay away from him, Patricia said. Somebody has a possessive girlfriend, one of my buddies said under his breath. I can't talk to any girl without you getting jealous, and now I can't talk to a guy about homework without you throwing a tantrum. What's next, Patricia? You won't let me talk to my friends, I said. I am your one and only, Patricia said, batting her eyes. Gregory still wasn't in his usual seat, three rows behind us. I don't think he'd ever missed a class. Had he figured out who I was? Anybody seen Gregory? Seriously? I told you to stay away from him, Patricia said. He's a nice guy, I said. Gregory's on your six, all the way in the back, my buddy whispered. Save us a seat, I said. Us, Patricia said, her mouth turning down. I climbed to the last row and took a seat on Gregory's left. 
Gregory was busy shuffling cards. I could hurry and explain things to him, and quickly apologize, tell him I'd love to study with him, and see if there was any way I could make up for how I acted as a kid. Gregory's eyes brightened when he saw me, and he moved his pack over to make room for me. The guy still didn't recognize me. Oliver, I'm saving a seat for you, Patricia yelled. It's next to me. I pretended I didn't hear her. Playing solitaire, I said. Practicing for my job, I work as a floor person at the Bernini Casino, and occasionally as one of the dealers. Blackjack's my specialty, he said. Bernini's? Seriously? That's where we're holding the annual athletic celebration, I said. What's that? Gregory asked. It's kind of like an award ceremony. All the athletes, coaches, and cheerleaders, and their families, and significant others, get together for dinner, and later, dancing, and the coaches make boring speeches and get drunk. The president of the university says how important the athletic department is, and sneaks out when no one is looking. A little later, they pass out awards, but everybody gets a trophy or a medal, I said. Sounds exciting, Gregory said. Do you want to be my plus one, I asked. Gregory snorted. Patricia already has that job, and besides, I have to work. The apartment won't rent itself. Finally, I asked Gregory, Why are you sitting back here by yourself? To keep things from being awkward, Gregory mumbled. Was this because of me? Of how I tormented him years ago? Maybe I could fix it. Why would someone as handsome as you hide in the shadows? I asked, letting just a little playful flirt tint my voice. Gregory's left hand immediately covered the scars, and his head drooped a little, enough to let his hair hang over his face and hide his left side. If Gregory knew who I was, he'd think I was making fun of him. Damn, I said the wrong thing. It's okay, I said, and pulled his left hand away from his cheek and held his fingers. I should have asked this years ago, instead of being a jerk. What happened? Gregory stared at his cards, his face hidden by his hair, and it seemed we were the only people in the room. I was about eleven. We went to visit my Aunt Steph and Uncle Edmund for a family picnic. They own the coolest place back east. It's a wolf preserve in the middle of a forest. Anyway, my cousins Jack and Wesley and I were goofing off, and Wesley wanted to show me the new wolf pup. Jack and Wesley went behind the house, and a few minutes later... Jack led out this big black wolf pup. We were playing around, probably a little too rough, and I guess the wolf was still wild because the pup bit me. The bite was too deep for the emergency room superglue, so I had to get stitches. They gave me a rabies shot and a tetanus shot and an antibiotic to be safe. My aunt made some natural tea that tasted weird, and she made me drink it every day for a week and tried to make me feel better by making me a really cool obsidian anklet. I still have it. She's into holistic stuff like that. What happened to the wolf? I asked. I never saw it again, but Aunt Steph said it's on the preserve somewhere. You should have heard my uncle yell at Wesley and Jack. Aunt Steph said I was lucky, Gregory said. He pulled out his phone and flicked through the pictures. It was the Gregory I remembered from middle school, but this picture was taken from the emergency room before they had stitched his cheek back together. It turned my stomach. Why had I been mean to Gregory? I looked away and said, What did your aunt mean? Gregory closed up his phone, an odd look in his eyes. I didn't get rabies or sick, and the bite didn't get infected. And while all the guys went to some party, I got to stay up all night watching my favorite shows. Aunt Steph had to close the curtains because the full moon was so bright, Gregory said. The professor entered the room. We didn't have much time so I couldn't explain about middle school or apologize, but maybe I could undo some of the damage I had caused. I'm sorry about yesterday, and I told Patricia she needed to apologize, I said. Gregory slightly blushed. Don't worry about it. I will. You've been alone too long. Come and join us today, and we can work on the paper after class, I said. I didn't give Gregory a chance to say no. I grabbed his hand and pulled him to his feet. Quickly, he loaded his pack and came along. One part of me said, run, and leave things well enough alone. But the other part, the stronger part, the part hurting with guilt, needed to apologize, and I needed Gregory to say, 
I forgive you. Maybe that way Gregory could heal. Maybe I could let the pain go too. Patricia gave an apology that made her sound like a stuck-up snot. All during the lecture, I tried to build up the courage to tell Gregory about me, and failed. After class, when we went to the library to work on the paper, it was the same way. Though we talked about anything and everything, even the paper, my guts felt like ants were crawling inside me every time I tried to say, I'm sorry. I've faced some mean guys on the court. Some of them could easily knock me out. But when it came to talking to Gregory, I'm a coward. Thursday night, I made a decision. But I don't know if it was the right decision. I dropped by Patricia's apartment. We need to talk, I said. I know what this is about, but don't worry. I finally found a purse that matches. This is the color of the tie you need to have. So I expect you to find a match, Patricia said, with a flirt to her voice. She held a piece of turquoise fabric. You're kidding, I asked. I'm not. Was that what you wanted to talk to me about, Patricia asked. I led her outside, and we went walking. It only makes this easier. There's no easy way to say this, but us is not working for me. I like you, but I don't think we'd be good married. I think we should end things. Patricia stopped moving, her jaw tensing up. You're breaking up with me? How dare you? Does this have something to do with that Gregory guy? I knew it. His little sweet and innocent puppy dog act stole you from me. He doesn't have anything to do with this, I said. I bet you're taking him to the celebration, not me, she yelled. No, I'm not. He has to work at the Bernini Saturday night. He runs a blackjack table, I said. You know his life story? I told you he was trouble. Bet he can't wait to jump into bed with you. Do you know how humiliating it is to be dumped for a man? Patricia yelled. It's not like that, I said. I mean, he's... How do you... How do I say this? I feel guilty about him. Of course you should feel guilty for running out on me. Did you ever really love me? She said. We stopped at a bench and sat down. Every relationship might start fun, but it always ended the same way. The dreaded conversation. I faced Patricia and said, I thought I loved you, and then you started controlling who I could see and be friends with. You were only happy when I did what you wanted. Let me tell you something. I wasn't a nice person back in middle school, or my first part of high school. I was always angry and mean. I picked on everybody, including a kid who had been attacked by a dog and had the facial scars to prove it. I was merciless to him, so much so that he changed schools to get away from me. Oliver, you were a kid then. You're not that person. Besides, what does that have to do with now? Patricia said. Then her eyes widened. Was that kid Gregory? It was, but he doesn't even know me now. That's not the issue, I said. So you're dumping me because you feel guilty about being mean to him? Is that why you're being nice to him? Patricia started yelling. No, but seeing him made me realize a few things, like how you and I aren't going anywhere. I get so angry with you, the kind of anger I thought I'd outgrown. Then we start fighting about little things until I let you in because I don't want to get angry. I don't want to be the person I was back in middle school. Patricia, what we had was fun, but there isn't a future between us. I'm leaving you before I lose control of my anger and do something I would regret, I said. Is this because of my dress? Because I wanted to talk about the celebration and you wanted to work on that stupid paper? With a gay man? You're in love with Gregory. I'm not sexy enough for you, Patricia yelled. Stop screaming. It doesn't have anything to do with Gregory. You and me, our priorities have changed, I said. You are dumping me because you are in love with the man you bullied years ago? Patricia screamed even louder. Aren't you listening to me? It's not like that, I said, trying to keep calm. It sure sounds like it. I hate you, Patricia screamed as she stormed off. That could have gone better. Still... 
I felt like somebody had lifted a 200-pound barbell off my back. The next day, an hour or so before class, me and my friends met Gregory at the library. I bought Gregory a coffee, and my friends kept snickering when we accidentally did something they thought was cute. The guys liked Gregory a lot more than Patricia. Oddly, so did I. Gregory had already written his first draft, so he helped us get our outlines done and find some books and articles. He even smiled and laughed and opened up. Is this what Gregory would have been like had I been kinder? We had an amazing time, that is, until I received a text from Patricia. I'm getting even. The hair on the back of my neck rose and my shoulders tightened. I forced myself to relax. What could Patricia do? I didn't even reply. Patricia didn't show for class that day either, but the five of us did. Gregory and I swapped phone numbers, only so we could talk about the upcoming paper. His smile made my ear, and halfway through class, he forgot himself, lowered the hood, and pulled the hair drooping over the side of his face back behind his ear revealing the odd-shaped scar. Why was I so mean to him all those years ago? He'd turned into a wonderful man. After I left him, something in my gut churned. I should have told him who I was. Maybe Gregory already knew, or maybe it didn't matter anymore. That was it. It didn't matter. Except something told me it did. Another question. Why was I still feeling guilty, years later? Saturday arrived. The celebration was tonight. Normally, I hated suits and ties. But I wanted to look good for Gregory. I picked up my tux, worked on my paper, and did laundry. Patricia didn't send any more texts or call. I'd still have to see her tonight. She was still head cheerleader and the cheerleaders had put together an audiovisual extravaganza. But I didn't have to go anywhere near her. The best part, after this semester, I'd never see her again. The Bernini Casino, like most places on the Strip, also contained a hotel, several restaurants, and a couple of banquet halls. The evening was divided up into parts. As soon as the athletes, their families, and dates, and special guests had taken their seats, the president of the university would speak, then the dean of athletics, and finally one of the coaches. Following that would be the presentation of awards. For the second act, we would eat. They always had great food at places like this, and I couldn't wait. During that time, the video the cheerleaders had made about the year would play, followed by dancing for those who stayed. I planned on staying and dancing, but I only had one person I wanted to dance with, Gregory. Maybe tonight, when the evening was over, I could tell him who I was. Would he hate me for not telling him sooner? Would he hit me because of everything I put him through? Scream at me? Yell at me? I had ruined his life back in middle school, so what would he do now? Gregory wouldn't scream. That's not his style. I would explain about my life back then, and he would understand. I'd apologize, and we could find somewhere and talk. I should find him now. I looked for Gregory in the casino. He was off to the side at a blackjack table, dealing cards for eight people. A man wearing a headset whispered something to Gregory, and Gregory nodded. Gregory was too busy now. I was a coward. I didn't want to ruin our new friendship. I didn't want to hurt him any more. I went to the banquet hall and found my family. Dad, stepmom, half-sister, stepbrother. I'm the oldest of the kids. Where's Patricia? My little sister asked. We broke up, I said. You broke up? When? Stepmom said, with an odd frown. She glanced at my dad. Thursday night? Why? I asked. Patricia came to see us Friday afternoon and wanted to make a surprise for you. She took pictures of your old yearbooks, Dad said. Why would she want some old pictures, I asked. Honey, I think she's trying to win you back, Stepmom said. 
The program began, and just like every year, the speeches were boring. At least until they got to the award ceremony. After that, it was half an hour of person after person going up to the makeshift stage and receiving either a medal, a plaque, or a trophy. I received a plaque and a certificate of honor, as did all the captains on every team. Once the ceremonies were over, we had a break while the room was being changed for dining and dancing. I told my folks that I'd be right back, and stepmom said, Going to find Gregory? How did you know about him? I said. Dad gave stepmom a stern glance and glanced at the kids. Stepmom slightly pursed her lips and said, Patricia said he's your new friend who is trying to steal you away and she doesn't approve of him and told us that we shouldn't either. Patricia is jealous because Gregory's gay and has nicer hair, I said. My little sister laughed. I left them and walked back to the casino. Gregory was still busy, and somebody that looked like Patricia in a turquoise evening gown sat at his table. I traded cash for chips and headed to Gregory's table. Patricia was drunk and made some weird scene. Security led her back to the banquet hall. Gregory gave me a smile as I sat down, but he held his hand over the scars. What had Patricia said to him? Some woman at the table gave Gregory a smile and said, If I was twenty years younger, I'd give whoever it is you're seeing a run for their money. Maybe I still could. I had to chuckle and I butted in. Ma'am, you are right. Gregory is sexy and amazing, but he's taken if he'll have me, I said. Oliver? Gregory suddenly stood taller, his smile shy and beautiful. He asked, I thought you were straight. I don't believe in labels, I said, and proceeded to flirt a little. When you get off work, would you be my plus one for dinner? I want you to meet my family. I played several hands, keeping my bets light so I could stay at the table longer. It worked. When Gregory and I left, I was five dollars ahead. We walked into the banquet hall, where everyone had taken their seats for the dinner. The screen showed highlights from this year's games, as well as showcasing all the players, cheerleaders, and coaches. Patricia and her friends gathered by the stage, lifted their wine glasses in a toast, and laughed about something. They saw me, and Patricia poured her wine onto the floor. The other cheerleaders snickered. Her text yesterday said that she would get even. It must be tonight. I took Gregory to meet my parents. It's a pleasure, stepmom said, taking hold of Gregory's chin so she could get a serious look at his face. I don't know if you'd be interested, but I have a cream that evens skin tones and it would hide the scars, and I have another that fades the scars, though it takes a while. Gregory immediately blushed, and I grabbed his left hand to keep it from going to his face. Dear, be quiet, Dad said, eyeing our two hands, now together. What? It's my day job, stepmom said. Gregory, meet my dad. He's a liar. And my stepmom. She's a dermatologist, I said, trying not to roll my eyes. My little sister giggled. I don't know where my stepbrother went off to. Um, Gregory asked, glancing at me. Why don't you and my wife talk while Oliver and I see if we can get some food, Dad said, taking me by the shoulders and leading me away. Dad, why did you want to talk to me in private? I asked. Dad folded his arms and gave me the look he reserved for an uncooperative witness. Is that the same guy you bullied back in middle school? We accidentally took the same class, I mumbled. Does he know it was you? Dad said. Not yet. I'm telling him tonight, I said. Dad shook his head and rested a hand on my shoulder. Son, you are playing with a live hand grenade and the pin's been pulled. Be careful. If you need help, me and your stepmom will be close by. We need a chance to talk and we'll be fine, I said. We found a waiter and together we brought the food over. Stepmom was talking to Gregory about scar tissue and best ways to soften it up when we returned. The soft smile she gave me and the sad look in her eyes made me think she remembered who Gregory was too. We sat at the table in a chicken cordon bleu with bacon-wrapped asparagus and scalloped potatoes topped with shredded Parmesan cheese. 
Some waiters were bringing out dessert, a steaming bread pudding with either strawberry topping or a caramel sauce. Dad whispered something in stepmom's ear, and she giggled. We're going dancing, stepmom said. Gregory and I also went dancing, and after a few songs, the music changed to a slow dance. Holding Gregory, feeling his warmth, knowing he was safe, made the night worthwhile. A nice, considerate, handsome man I could fall in love with. Why wasn't I nicer to him all those years ago? The screen flashed different pictures, from one player to another, from one team to another, from game to game, displaying the highlights of the year. As I held Gregory, he suddenly stiffened. He stared at the screen. What is it? I asked, and broke apart enough to see what he saw. A caption read, Guess who your lover is, Gregory? I don't understand. We've never dated, or anything, Gregory whispered, his face turning bright red. The screen held an image of me through the years, from baby pictures to the happy carefree photos of elementary school. It seemed to pause on my fifth grade photo of a smiling me, the year my life fell apart. Late that year, my biological mom moved away from us. The picture had a caption that read, Our beloved Captain Oliver. It didn't stay on fifth grade, but flashed through all my middle school photos. My middle school years were not good years. When I was in sixth grade, my parents officially divorced, and Mom dated a guy and moved in with him. She never even invited me to visit. Dad started dating again, and met the woman who would eventually become my stepmom. Those years, I was angry and couldn't stop being angry. I took it out on Dad, on stepmom, on the other students, including the man I was dancing with. My hands chilled. I had changed a lot since middle school. The slightly soft, boyish face had firmed up as I got more involved in sports. I dressed different now. I acted different. I had changed. The next image was of Gregory and me talking in economics. The caption read, Greggy needs to know the truth. A caption appeared. Captain Oliver isn't a nice person. The screen showed an image of some kid. Wait, that was a younger version of Gregory. How would she find an image like this? The yearbook photos. She'd taken more pictures than just mine. The screen flashed a picture of me back in middle school. My stomach soured. The caption read, Greggy and Oliver knew each other back in middle school. They were enemies. Nobody here knew who Gregory was, except Patricia. This was her revenge. The screen showed a different picture of Gregory, also from middle school. He had a huge bandage on his cheek and didn't smile, and there was a sadness about his eyes. A picture of me back in middle school appeared next to his. A bright red heart drew around them. Then it broke. The picture changed to one Patricia had recently taken, Gregory with the scars, and they were highlighted. The caption said, Oliver was mean. Nothing has changed. Now do you remember who your lover is, Gregory? Gregory pulled away from me. He hung his head so his hair covered the left side of his face and his hand covered his cheek. Patricia and her friends were looking at us and Patricia took a sip from her refilled champagne glass and gave me a wicked grin. To say I regretted dating her would be an understatement. It was you. Gregory said, but soft enough so only I heard him. Gregory knew who I had been. My knees shook and my spine felt like jello. An image appeared, a photoshopped one of me and Gregory together. A shoddy photoshopped image of a dog bit its way towards Gregory. The image went dark. The music stopped. Somebody must have shut off the computer. Patricia screamed, Turn it back on. It's getting to the best part. Wasn't torturing me back in middle school enough? You made my life hell, Gregory said, keeping his head and his voice low. 
Something hurt inside me. What do I say? It's not like that. What did you do? Wake up one morning, see me in class, and say, Let's humiliate Gregory one last time. Let's get our jollies just like back in middle school, Gregory said, his eyes brimming with tears. Gregory, I'm sorry for back then, for the way I treated you, I said. I want things to be different now. After everything you did to me, you expect me to trust you? What's the phrase? Set me up to knock me down again? Gregory said, his voice getting louder and louder until he was screaming. I changed schools to get away from you, but I can never get away from you. You're in my head always screaming and tearing me apart, always yelling how ugly I am. Remember the day you tripped me and I fell on my face? Remember? There you were, laughing, while I was bleeding. You destroyed me in middle school, and you're still doing. What more do you want from me? You win. Oh, my God. The shy, quiet man was screaming. What had I done? Dad was right. This was a live hand grenade, and Patricia had pulled the pin. Gregory was melting down right in front of me, and I had caused it. Gregory, listen to me, I said, and pulled him as close as I could. Gregory pushed away and stared at me, tears streaming from his eyes. I liked you. I thought you liked me too, Gregory yelled. It was a lie. When will you stop? The crowd around us stared, stunned. Gregory was almost hysterical. The damage I had done was worse than I realized. I had destroyed a person when he was at his most fragile, and Gregory was still fragile because of me. Gregory was in pure nuclear meltdown. Ten years of pain, of self-loathing, of anger turned inward, of utter helplessness exploded out of him right now. Let me explain, I said. You're not doing this to me again. Gregory screamed. Wait, give me a chance. I stood there, unable to move, as Gregory walked away. Patricia and her cheerleading friends had their phones out and were recording us. No doubt the video would be on their Facebook pages later tonight. I apologize. I should have told you who I was. What I did back in middle school was wrong, and I'm sorry. I've been trying to figure out how to make it up to you, I said. We need to talk because you're someone I've grown to care for. But you need to understand, it's not me being mean tonight. It's Patricia being nasty to both of us. I broke up with her, and now she's getting revenge. Patricia laughed. Damn right I am. Gregory never even turned around. He simply and quietly walked out the door. He let his hair drape over the left side of his face, and once again hid from the world. My heart left with him. Dad was right. Tonight was a live grenade, and it had gone off with me at ground zero. I had never felt so helpless in my life. Monday morning, I was ready. It had taken me all Sunday while I was working on the economics paper to come up with a plan. Technically, I wrote two papers. The most important one was the three-page apology letter. In it, I said I'd take Gregory out to dinner 60 times, one dinner for each day I tormented him back at middle school, and I'd take him on every rooftop roller coaster in Vegas, and we'd ride the giant Ferris wheel, and I'd take him to the hot springs in Moapa. I'll do whatever it takes to make us okay again. Nervous, breathless, anxious, I bought two coffees and two breakfast burritos, had the papers, and I went to class. Gregory would sit in the last row, avoiding the world. He'd have his gray hood pulled up and his hair covering his face, and he'd be shuffling cards. Why would somebody as good-looking as he was hide all the time? Because of me. I had done that to him, and I had to fix it. I couldn't wait to see Gregory, to apologize, to talk, drink coffee, and repair our friendship. I only needed a chance. Patricia better not be there to ruin things. I received a text from stepmom. Got news, and I have a client I want you to meet. Let's do lunch. That's weird. Was stepmom setting me up with someone? She never had before. Stepmom worked with a lot of people. Maybe she knew someone who had a job. I texted. Once I patched things up with Gregory. Can I bring him? Sure. 
I walked in the class, balancing the coffees, my pack, and the sack of food, only to notice two things. Both made my heart sink. Patricia sat in our usual row, smirking as if she'd won the lottery. She gave me a sarcastic sad face with a finger pretending to be a tear and mouthed, It was worth it. Gregory did not sit in the last row. There was no guy with long hair and a hoodie sitting anywhere in the classroom. Maybe he was late. I doubt it. Was he avoiding me? After Saturday night? Probably. The professor entered, setting his briefcase down. He pulled out several papers and laid them on the podium. Before we start, I want to commend two of you for emailing in your papers early. In fact, I see one of those authors in class right now. I read through both papers, and one was nicely written, and I enjoyed reading it. Definitely top quality, our professor said. Patricia sat a little taller and didn't bother hiding the pleased smile. Was that Gregory's paper, I said? Yes, it was. When you see him, tell him well done for me, the professor said. The metaphorical lightning bolt struck, and I stopped breathing. He's not coming to class today? According to the accompanying email, he had some personal matters to take care of and won't make it today, the professor said. A small part of my soul shattered. Gregory was avoiding me. Can I blame him? I must have had some weird expression on my face, because Patricia laughed. I took a seat at the very back, saving a space for Gregory, just in case. My three friends joined me. The professor became serious and said, The other paper brings us to matters more serious. I won't name names, student confidentiality and all, but I can state general principles. This student, who is here right now, did something stupid and its grounds for immediate expulsion. What many of you might not realize, our anti-plagiarism software is quite good. This student downloaded their paper from the internet and submitted it. You'd think people would learn, but it happens at least once every year. That student will receive a failing grade in my class and the ethics committee will be in contact with that person. Good thing I haven't started mine, one of my friends said. The professor must have heard him and chuckled. Might I suggest you get started then? It is due Friday. Somebody screamed. Patricia. Expelled? Failing? You wouldn't dare. What's wrong with this university? I'm the head cheerleader, and they want to kick me out over a stupid, worthless paper? So what if I downloaded it? I don't have time to write your papers. And what's the point? All the information is on the internet anyway. I have more important work to do than put together rehashed garbage, and I'm not wasting any more of my time on this worthless class. Scowling, screaming, Patricia gathered her things and got up. Somebody yelled, Run before they catch you. Patricia raised the middle finger on her left hand as she left and swore. A ripple of nervous laughter rumbled through the class. I sipped both coffees and ate both burritos. Class seemed empty with Gregory gone. Something inside me seemed empty as well. Maybe I'd find him in the cafeteria before class tomorrow and we could talk. I needed to say I'm sorry a million times, but it was obvious. Gregory didn't want to see me. How could my life get any worse? I couldn't pay attention to whatever the professor was saying, and somewhere during the class, the rest of my soul shattered. Face it, there was no way I could apologize now. Something inside hurt. Class ended, and I texted stepmom. Having a bad day, I'd rather be alone. She texted, too late, I'm outside. Tell us about it over lunch. I went outside to the parking lot, my friends following. Stepmom's car was in the drop-off zone in front of the building. Stepmom leaned against her car talking to a student wearing a light pink fitted polo shirt and light khaki shorts fresh off the rack. He wore leather sandals and had a black beaded anklet around his left ankle. He had long brown hair tinted with coppery highlights and professionally cut and styled. He stood tall confident, like a professional model. The sunlight highlighted the chiseled cheeks and a mouth that fought the urge to smile. 
A pair of silver designer mirror shades covered his eyes. Whoever this guy was, he was styling hot. Stepmom's new client must be a movie star, or a TV star, or a model. Stepmom was setting me up. After the mess with Patricia, and with Gregory not wanting to see me again, I wasn't ready. I don't think I wanted to date for at least a year. The sun glinted off a silver chain around the man's neck, and he was playing with something hanging from it. A rainbow crystal. It was just like the one Gregory wore. Oh my God. It was... No, it can't be. Stepmom must be a genie because the scars on his left cheek were barely visible. When he saw me, he ran his fingers through his hair and then smiled. I'd like you to meet my new client. Somebody needed a friend, and we had a long talk this morning about life, about school, about living. It's amazing what you talk about when you're getting your hair done, Stepmom said. And everything else. Thanks, Gregory said. Stepmom gave Gregory a quick hug and whispered something. Gregory, I can't believe this is you. You look like you just stepped off a photo shoot. Wow, I said, stopping and staring. Dude, what happened? You look so different, one of my friends said. Saturday night, your stepmom followed me outside and we started talking, Gregory said, and started to look down. Gregory, what did I say earlier? Imagine a string pulling your head up. It's time to look at the future. Your future, stepmom said. Gregory nodded, but he didn't stop smiling. When he looked at me, I couldn't stop smiling either. I grew serious and looked away. I wanted to say I'm sorry. I even wrote you an apology letter about middle school, about not telling you who I was, about how I could make it up to you, about everything. You don't know how bad I feel. What can I do to say, I'm sorry? Gregory took my hand, leaned in, and whispered, You can buy me a coffee. I'm not fancy. Just a plain one will do. There's nothing plain about you, I said, pulling Gregory close and hugging him. My relationships usually lasted a few months, but not this one. I took Gregory out every weekend. I was there when Gregory graduated with his bachelor's, and he helped me survive the law program. Two years after that night at Bernini's, we flew to the most beautiful place I'd ever been, Wolf Hollow, the wolf preserve Gregory's aunt and uncle owned. We held our service on their back lawn, in back of the two-story stone manor they called a home. Gregory's uncle, Edmund, walked Gregory down the aisle to where I stood with my friends, and Gregory's cousin Jack stood beside him. It was a simple service, with family and a few friends. I couldn't believe how good Gregory looked. Why had I ever been mean to him? Gregory wore his hair tight back. Thanks to stepmom, his scars were only a faint reminder of days best forgotten. Stepmom didn't stop crying at the service either. Gregory's mom and his aunt Steph made both of us crystal necklaces. Gregory's was made of polished rose quartz and obsidian, while mine was made of rose quartz and moonstone. As the evening sunset filtered through the trees surrounding the manor, our wedding service began. A silver crescent moon hung low over the eastern horizon, and small twinkling white lights highlighted some of the trees. Gregory and I held hands in front of the judge, our families, and our friends. I must have had the strangest look on my face. What is it? Gregory whispered. Nobody could hear us, so I whispered. Thank you for giving me a second chance. And I couldn't help myself. I started to cry. Come here, Gregory said, and held me. I held my beautiful, incredible, soon-to-be husband and kissed him while the judge rambled on about love being as eternal as the moon. If your hearts beat any faster, you two would have to start a rock band, Jack whispered. The judge wrapped our hands in a white satin ribbon and said, May your love be forever. The End Thank you for joining me, my friends. Peace.